Hey guys, Jeff here with Martin Survival. So here with me today I have the bushcraft pouch made by my good friend Alan Ainsworth. And I gotta say, I've been using this for quite some time and it's a great little piece of gear. Today I'm gonna show you what I keep inside of my kit. We'll go over some of the features and specs of this pouch. So stay with me and let's start our review. All right, first off, I'll go over some of the features and specs on the pouch, and then I'll show you what I keep inside of mine. Now, keep in mind, what I keep inside of my kit might be a little bit different than yours. I keep a lot of bushcraft stuff in here. You might want to keep some black powder shooting items. Either one, this pouch is great for. Now, this is made, of course, by Howling Dingo Leatherworks, and uh, the owner of that is Alan Ainsworth. It's all made in Australia, handmade. It's not like a big factory is pushing one after another out onto the market. So you can assure that you're getting the quality and craftsmanship of a small business and uh, entrepreneur. So with that being said, this is uh, all cowhide on the top. Anywhere where there's brown on this pouch is cowhide. You can see it's a nice thick leather too. And then all the black stuff and black leather is kangaroo hide. Has a deer antler bone up top for the button. Stitching is beautiful on this, nice and tight. Nothing's broken loose and I gotta say I have taken this thing throughout the hills of Joshua Tree to where rocks rub on the front of it and the top and I've taken it up to Big Bear Mountains and even some of the pine trees have rubbed against the leather and as you can see it's still just nice and tight so excellent stitching there the belt slits are on the back here and if you have a wide size belt that'll fit and then you also have a metal d-ring up top here and i like that he threw this on this pouch because if i want to attach this to a sling or maybe a backpack i can do so leather pulls in the front here and you just loosen it up and that just slips right off the top and then you have two more leather pulls on the inside and that opens the whole thing up and as you can see it just opens nice and wide and I have large hands so if I need to quickly grab something I have the capability of doing so because of the wide mouth opening and the uh, the total inches is uh, eight and a half by six and a half. So with that being said, I'll show you what I keep inside of my kit. First thing is of course, my Hudson Bay tobacco tin. It has a magnifying glass up top for fire. And then I have my fire kit inside with a few medicinal items, which is some jute twine, charred cloth, a sail needle, piece of quartz, steel striker, and some chaga. And that's the first thing. Then I have a beeswax candle wrapped up in some paper and jute twine so I have fire making materials. And then with the beeswax, of course I have waterproofing and that's what I use this block for. But if I also need an emergency candle, I have it with me too. Then I have a tinder nest, this is jute twine. A Little bit more jute twine and this is some rope I weaved. couple pieces of chaga, also known as tinder fungus, and we'll go over this in a later video. This has excellent medicinal value to it, but it also acts as a coal extender, and that's where it gets the name tinder fungus from, is because uh, once you hit this thing with a spark, it lights up just like a charcoal, and you cannot get it out unless you run water over it. I've even tried to dig it out with a knife, the little ember that catches, and no go. So. That's excellent stuff. And like I said, we'll go over it later on. Then I have some lip balm, medicine of the people. And this I got in Arizona by a tribeswoman. A little bit expensive, but it's all natural ingredients and it is the best for you. And they don't have all the chemicals and all that other crap in there. So that's good stuff. Then I have a toggle stick and I can use this as a trap trigger, but I can also use this 
And what I usually use this for is to get my canteen out of the fire when I'm boiling down some water. I have a squirrel call and in a later video in the spring months, I'll go over this and we'll give this a field test. I got this from my friend Jeremy Russell. I actually got that through a trading post. Last thing I have is a ferro rod and this is actually made by Allen as well. This is a red deer bone and of course the ferro rod with a steel striker, piece of leather and a couple other bones here. And uh, he makes all kinds of handmade stuff, not only pouches. And with all of that, I actually had some more room on the top of this pouch. So you can see how much gear this little thing carries. Uh, you, can, you can load it up more than I had it loaded. And I just tighten it down, tie it, and then put the other piece of leather, the loop, over the antler, pull these tight, and that is the bushcraft pouch. So my final thoughts on the bushcraft pouch, this makes an excellent addition to your kit. Anytime I go out into the bush to practice a certain skill, scout around for a new location, or even camping, I always have this on my side. It's easy to slip on your belt and it's also easy to slip off. So if you need to just quickly attach it, there's not gonna be a lot of grab on it. It just slips on, slips off, and I like that a lot. I also like the fact that it has a nice wide opening, so if I'm in an emergency situation and I need to quickly get to my fire kit, I can grab it and I can get my fire going. But if I also want to practice a certain skill, I have that fire kit right on top and I, once again, have easy access to it and I can grab it fairly quickly. Now the price point on this bushcraft pouch is about $130 and you got to remember, you know, Anything that's handmade like this and anything that has a lot of quality to it and it's very durable, it's going to cost a little bit of extra money, but to me, that's worth it. I know the quality that I'm getting and I know this is going to last me my entire lifetime. Well guys, I appreciate you joining me for this video. I'm Jeff with Martin Survival. We'll see you in the next one.